Good morning and welcome back to our Ask the Agronomist video series. I am Phil Long, Precision Agronomy Advisor with Latham High Tech Seeds. And we're here on this last week in 2021 to cover corn yields and where they came from in 2021. So I wanted to do just a quick recap. We're just going to kind of run through these really quick. My top three on where I feel corn yields have come from in the 2021 growing season. Some things that we have to be thankful for uh, that are out of our control and some things that maybe we can plan or make some resolutions for in the upcoming 2022 growing season. So I apologize for not having my 2022 glasses on right now, but uh, hopefully everybody's getting prepared and ready for a great 2022 as we head that direction. So just to jump right in, my top three, looking at how we get the corn yields we got in 2021. So I always, I always like to reiterate where the yield comes from. So obviously plants per acre, kernels per ear, and then the weight of that kernel is where your yield comes from. So my top three are gonna be uh, essentially in that same order, planting conditions, uh, balanced fertility, and a little bit of increased solar radiation. Uh, and the last one is uh, timely rains. So if we jump right into planting conditions, this is a big topic. We talk about it quite a bit, uh, but the number one thing is we planted timely in most of Latham country. We planted on time when corn should have been in the ground for ideal or optimal yields. And then we got good emergence. So I talk a lot about uniform stand and, and picket fence stands, but when it comes down to it, the brass tacks, uniform emergence wins every time. Uh, we may see a 5 to even 20% yield difference or decrease if we see delayed emergence by up to two to three weeks. And in this case, having that uniform emergence was critical. And in 2021, a vast majority got good emergence because we had ideal soil conditions, the temperatures were good, they came out of the ground evenly. If you got it planted deep enough and into moisture, uh, just a lot of things, factors that, that came into play to help it get out of the ground, right? It had a slow start. Uh, but it came up uniformly, the competition was uniform, and then once it got the heat, it really took off. So planning conditions, uh, something that if maybe didn't happen so well in 2021 for you, that's something you can definitely plan on making even better in 2022. Second thing, as it relates to all those yield factors I talked about, but especially the ones in the middle, the, the length of the ear, uh, kernel number, as well as the, the girth and the kernel weight, <clears throat> is fertility and I and specifically balanced fertility. So having balanced fertility uh, is really critical, especially around that pollination period when we're looking at when severe stress can cause issues. This year in particular was a little shorter than what we'd like to see, but it also shows another great uh, representation of 2021 and that it filled the best it could because it had those resources, the fertility, it had the resources going through grain fill to really fill out the tip of that ear, which was pretty impressive. Uh, so, you know, having that balanced fertility there, when you get those rains, and in some cases they came at the perfect times, uh, really helped. Another little factor adding in here, I was at a, a Iowa State the ICM conference, the annual conference this year, and they talked about an increase of 7% in solar radiation that we saw this, this season. So solar radiation is uh, directly and not necessarily 7% to 7% yield, but uh, directly correlated to yield and that the more radiation we get, the more sun beating down on those corn plants and the more that it can take up and turn into sugars and ultimately more corn in the grain tank and the combine uh, it is directly related. So we saw less cloudy days, uh, more, uh, more sun, less rain. It wasn't ideal and from what we thought, but the corn plants uh, did the best they could and utilized that extra radiation and the combination of, you know, higher temperatures during the day, lower at night, uh, really balanced things out for the corn this year and uh, did really well. So no severe stresses during pollination leads right into the last thing, which is timely rains. And in, a, in many areas, we got timely rains exactly when they needed to be, or maybe at just the right time, I would say. Sometimes we saw corn rolling up, and I know, uh, as a disclaimer, those up in the north definitely are, saw some pretty tough corn yields in 2021. So not everybody got timely rains. <clears throat> Specifically us here, we were in a little more of a drought than most of the surrounding regions. So we got an, an, an average of around 10, 10 to 12 inches for the 2021 growing season. Still averaged 200 plus bushel corn. 
So if you think about just that, we're seeing about 20 bushels of corn in the grain tank for one inch of, of soil moisture. So really impressive. And that leads me to the second part of that, which is what our modern hybrids can do. Since the 70s, we've been seeing an increase in the ability of, of corn, modern corn genetics to really have enhanced water use efficiency. And that's all attributed to corn breeders really trying to you know, tighten that up and make sure that those corn plants, when they get the moisture, uh, you know, how do they respond in the intermediary when they don't have as much moisture without losing yield? Because corn really, anytime it's stressed, we always talk about decreases the yield overall. So how can they kind of adjust that so the corn can survive even in those tough periods? And I think that's what we're seeing, especially in 2021. We saw a good representation of that and how our modern genetics really do better at handling water use efficiency, mon you know, monitoring that nitrogen uptake with that water. In many cases, some of the higher yields came from not even the highest nitrogen rate. So just a lot of things, a lot of factors that came into play there, but timely rains were really critical uh, when it comes to the 2021 season. So the year in review, uh, I hope everybody has a great end of their 2021 year. Uh, and we have a lot to be thankful for, especially when we talk about corn and soybean yields in 2021 and looking forward to the 2022 growing season. Hopefully this gave you a couple things to think about and to think about for the upcoming season. Maybe you can switch and uh, you know adapt so that you can make just a little bit better and getting that crop off to the right start. But also don't forget, there's a lot of things out of our control, a lot of things that we have to just be thankful for. So thanks for watching. We look forward to talking to you more in 2022.